At the heart of every atom in this universe like this one, we can find a nucleus. And inside every nucleus, we have positively charged protons and neutral neutrons bundled up together. Well, have you ever wondered to yourself, what is that super glue that's forcing these particles to stay stuck together? Well, that super glue is what we call the strong nuclear force. It is a short-range force, meaning it acts between these protons and neutrons when they're really close to each other. We're talking in the femtometer range. When these particles do get this close, the strong nuclear force becomes attractive, causing these particles to stay close stuck together. But hold on! What about the force of repulsion acting between the positively charged protons? Well, it's not as if it has vanished, it's just that the strong nuclear force becomes so strong that it overcomes this force of repulsion. And so, it's the strong nuclear force that glues these particles inside the nucleus. Since we're on this topic of the subatomic particles, let us ask another question. Are protons, neutrons and electrons the only smallest particles in this entire universe? The answer to that is no, because we do have particles that are much smaller than even these. They're what we call fundamental particles. These are particles that are so small that you cannot break them down any further. Things are about to get even more interesting. It turns out that every fundamental particle also has its mirror image version. It's entirely identical except with opposite charge. These are what we call antiparticles. Particles that are identical to their fundamental counterpart, just with opposite charge. As an example, let us consider the electron. Its antiparticle version is what we call a positron. The only difference they have is their charge. Where the electron has a charge of minus 1 times e, the positron has the opposite charge of plus 1 e. With this new understanding of fundamental particles, let us look at the two categories or families that we see in our universe. We first have the leptons which do not feel the strong nuclear force and then we have the hadrons which do feel the strong nuclear force. Of the two, leptons are fundamental because they cannot be broken down further. We have the following four leptons. Finding the electron in this category shouldn't be a surprise to us. Why? Because electrons reside outside of the nucleus, and so they are not capable of even feeling the strong nuclear force. The next particle we have is the positron, which is simply the antiparticle version of the electron. Finally, the remaining two types of leptons we have are the neutrino and the antineutrino. These two particles are chargeless and have negligible mass and we will see them more importantly when we encounter beta decay. Hadrons, on the other hand, are not fundamental. Instead, they can be broken down into smaller particles that we call quarks. In this universe, we have a huge variety or flavors of quarks, which are all listed down over here with their respective charges. And since these are fundamental, we also have their antiparticle versions that we call antiquarks, now, coming back to the family of hadrons, there are two other subcategories. We have the mesons and the baryons. All mesons are made up of exactly one quark and one antiquark. And on the other hand, baryons are all made up of three quarks exactly. And it is within this family of baryons that we find protons and neutrons residing. Protons are made up of two up and one down quarks. We can verify that this quark composition works by just adding up all of the fractional charges. We know that the charge of the up quark is plus 2 over 3 times E and the charge of a down quark is minus 1 over 3 times E. Add up their fractional charges and you get a value that's equal to the charge of one proton, which is plus 1 times E. The neutron is made up of one up and two down quarks. Here, when you add up the fractional charges, the total charge ends up being zero. This goes to show that neutrons are neutral 
because of zero net charge. And so we're finally wrapped up with the second checkpoint. Let's do a quick overview. Here we discuss the two categories of fundamental particles, leptons and hadrons, and then we studied some of their components. For leptons, we studied the electron, positron, neutrino, and antineutrino. And for hadrons, we talked about the two baryons, protons and neutrons, and some of their core compositions.